What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. What is good? We're back with another episode of the FF Dynasty. We got the whole crew here, the tripods here, plus one. So today we're more of a table. We got it. We got four sturdy legs. We're kind of ready to roll. We were maybe going to take this week off. Uh, I am having knee surgery tomorrow, uh, but uh, we have an exciting guest here who, when he messaged us, we didn't want to turn it down with the opportunity to talk to him and let him explain his product to uh, to our audience. Um, but what's up, fellas? Jay Wayne, how you doing? Doing well, doing well, better than you. Don't have to go into surgery tomorrow, so that's good. Uh, oh, that's good though, man. It's just a little cleanup, so nice, nice. I know that's been bothering you, so hopefully <laughs> that, that helps you out. Revelry brought back the Funk Master, uh, so loving that. Drinking this little uh, oh, that's Belgian. your go-to. You you love a good funk. It's good. It's good stuff. Uh, so uh, feeling good. Glad to have our guest on today, Nelson. Um, Thanks, Jay. Yeah, looking forward to talking about it. As you guys know, we're mostly Dynasty, so this fits right in with uh with what we do and we're going to get into a, a lot of ffpc talk today big co i know you love the ffpcs you got to be looking forward to this little chit chat we're going to have sure as soon as uh casey called me and told me that uh nelson reached out and kind of briefly explained what was happening i was like oh this sounds this sounds good to me it's tasty it's kind of right up something i was thinking i needed to have i never thought about producing it and creating it like nelson did but i knew as soon as casey told me about it i was like this was kind of in the back of my mind that should be out there and i'm excited to hear how it came about what nelson's been going through to to bring it to us yes so to introduce you to nelson and his voice if you're not listening uh or if you're not watching on youtube nelson how you doing man hey boys thank you thank you very much for having me i really appreciate you giving me a little bit of a forum here and, and your time i much appreciate it we're excited about it minus the eagle paraphernalia on the wall uh, yeah, we, my wife talk, is an eagles fan we talk a lot of trash about eagles fans but you seem like a nice guy uh, I'm not. <laughs> uh, I think so. All right, I, I, right on I can already see it in your eye on Sunday at one o'clock. You're a nightmare. Yeah. I can start putting up the Eagles tattoos and stuff. <laughs> you know, whatever I got to do. Uh, so, like I said, we weren't going to do a show, but this guy uh, Nelson approached us. He is from the Dynasty Depot. He's starting up a little company, uh, and we're really excited about it. It's kind of partnered with FFPC. So for those of you not familiar with FFPC, we do talk it a decent amount on this show, but it's in bits and pieces. It's a, a website where you can go and they have all sorts of different games you could play fantasy football wise from best ball to redraft to dynasty and all sorts of different um, monetary brackets from 35 all the way up to thousands of dollars. They have multiple different tournaments that you can play them with all sorts of different people like Nelson. I know he's a big player in there. Um, so it's a lot of good things. Me and Big Co got interested because we ran out of some degenerate friends to gamble and play dynasty fantasy football with. So that's kind of, we started one and then it just snowballed from there. And that's how we've kind of developed our affinity for FFPC. But Nelson at the dynasty depot, um, has all sorts of, uh, cool things he's rolling out and partnered with FFPC. Um, and he is at the Dynasty Depot on Twitter. So make sure you go follow that. The website is going to be dynastydepot.com. You can go over there and check that out. Uh, so Nelson, um, anything, anything that we should add with my FFPC, that, that's where you can find it. It's at my uh, FFPC.com. So anything you want to add to FFPC before we get rolling uh, on talks of your product here? Yeah. I mean, like you said, uh, to me, you know, I, I have, as we talked about, I probably have 105 dynasty teams and I play in their, their $500,000 main event, $2,000 buy-in, um, draft out in Vegas, draft online. To me, the broad spectrum of their platforms are like no others. First of all, it's known as the high stakes company. So yes, they have $35 best balls. Yes, you can get a $77 dynasty team, but for players that like to play, you know, 500 and up, that's the place to be. The credibility um, with those guys is unmatched. They've never 
that I'm not going to give you exact numbers, but let's use five figures of dynasty teams. They've never had a league fold ever, ever. That's yeah, why, yeah, that's that's big, why uh, I joined. Yeah, that's their big claim to fame there. That's and that's a that's why Big Coat, you, you know, they got his money originally. So for me, when I was out seeking a partner for Dynasty Depot, obviously this was the natural thing for me to go because I'm familiar with them and um, I know the management and you know, as a player, and there's nothing better you can do, you know, if you're looking for, you know affirmation of, of what a company's like if you're a player and how they've handled you the last 10 years. Well, now us partnering with them, they'll be handling my customers and I'm really comfortable with that. All right. Well, that's, that was, that's a good, uh, filled in some good pieces to the FFPC puzzle there. Again, that's my to go ahead and check that out. Um, so Nelson, let's talk about your product. Uh, the, the at the dynasty depot on twitter again dynastydepot.com is where you will be finding this fantastic product now how did this come about why did you do it what is it all about fill us in on the details here well how it came about was the off season basically sucks for everybody right you know you just you're planning you're looking forward to drafting your scout doing your rookie scouting one word comes to mind when you ask me that question is off season, we were looking for action. What can we create to create action in the off season? Okay. Dynasty Depot is not a product for in season dynasty Depot at this point, dynasty Depot is an off season product. So when week 16 ends, which is the end of dynasty season in FFPC, you'll go 13 weeks and three weeks of playoffs. When week 16 ends, what could we create that could A, create a frenzy and B, create action? And that's how we created Dynasty Depot. So <clears throat> Dynasty Depot, in a nutshell, is an auction site for FFPC Dynasty teams. So what does that mean? Well, that means you're able to bid on teams, you're able to buy teams, you're able to sell teams. How does it work? So you want to sell your team. It works the same as eBay. You'll say you want to sell a $77 team. You'll set a reserve. Okay. You'll set a buy it now. And it will be a straight auction. You'll be able to decide whether you want a one, three, or five day auction time frame. You'll set your reserve. You'll set your buy it now. And you'll post your team. Okay. Buying a team. Everything will be filtered four ways. By best ball, by super flex, by super flex, best ball, by standard. So you'll filter what league you're interested in. You'll use the same metrics in dollar amount, 77, 250, 500, 750, 1250, 2500, 5000. And you'll be able to filter your teams. Um, you'll see what's for sale. We're anticipating uh, when the live auctions begin on January 4th, somewhere between one and 300 teams right away that will be up for sale from doing our homework of what's going on. People that are going to be interested in this, as, as I, me and Bitco talked a little bit about, is an orphan team. So we know what an orphan team is. That's an abandoned team. Somebody that wants to leave a league and decides, you know, I'm out. This is a giving them an option to not walk away to actually cash out something. And on the buyer side, as we also discussed briefly, for you to land a quality orphan team, and there is plenty of them. People walk away from teams for a lot of reasons. Maybe the wife saw sure. your portfolio and she sure. didn't like it. You know. Yeah. Not There's just because they're of, bad. Not just because all the not, not just because they're awful they're teams. Bad. Correct. Right, because that's um, what you normally think, right? Is that the orphan team is just some guy who doesn't want to play anymore well, because he's got a bad team, right? Well, let, let, I'll just put it to you like this: on FFPC last year, there was over 500 teams that were orphaned. Okay, I'm going to tell you that 40 percent of them sold, which you never saw because somebody went on the site every 10 minutes, kept refreshing 
as a new team's posted, a quality team hits, you click buy it, it's gone. That team's immediately gone. You don't even see some of it. I could share with you a 1250 team. Uh, you know what? I'll just do it because we're yapping. A 1250 team that I bought for 1250. I insta clicked on it because I got lucky and just clicked on it. And it, it went up for sale. I immediately clicked on it. So th this is this team. And I have not made a lot of moves on this team. Okay. So you're looking at a team that was orphaned. And my team is uh, Matt Ryan, Edward Hilaire, Kareem Hunt, Aaron Jones, Todd Gurley, Singletary, um, Devontae Parker, Allen Robinson, Godwin. So I had 101 and 108, I believe. Gusecki, Ertz, and Herndon. Okay, obviously that team's in first place. I didn't have to do a lot. It's pretty easy to draft CEH at 101 and move on, stuff like that. Yeah. So, and re real quick, FFPC is, is tight end premium, um, and it's a little bit shorter of a bench. I don't know if – I'm pretty sure the we don't play any super flex over here, but it's 20 roster spots on a standard. Yes. Um, so it's a little shorter bench of a dynasty as well. Yes, it, it, it's, it's a shorter bench. So going back to the orphans, if you don't click on that FFPC orphan page – 50 times a day, you're going to miss stuff like that. So what I decided was I don't want anybody to miss that. And that team was worth more than $1,250. I'm, I'm going to win 8,000 in that league this year. Okay. That team, you should have gone for $2,500. The guy should have been able to make a profit on that. 2,500, 28 bucks. It was too good. Too many picks. So in our membership package, our media membership, which we'll, we'll talk about, which I'm giving away, it's for $59. Our $99 package will be $59. And like I said, we'll talk about that. But you, what you get in that is text notification every time a new team posts on Dynasty Depot, meaning that team will pop up on your phone. Immediately, you can look at the roster real quick and decide if you want to bid on it. You won't miss that because people are busy. It's hard to, to be me and click on the orphan page 50 times a day. Sure. So the text notifications for people for new postings, it, it was a key. It's really a key. And, and this, it, is a, this is through an app? Do you have, is this an app driven? How are you, how are you getting the text? Uh, you have to talk to my developers. Okay. It's some okay. kind of notification service. Okay. That's, <laughs> All right. That's beyond my pay grade. I love gotcha. it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. If you, you, need something, you need something technical over here, you got to talk to Jay Wayne. I, I, we feel you, uh, Nelson. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not close on that stuff. <laughs> but <laughs> but let me let me um, jump in real quick before you go. keep going. Because the way you're setting it up, the way you're breaking it down, the way you're delivering what you got going on is clear, easy to follow. I'm sure anybody that's listening right now is picking up everything you're laying down. and I, where you're going from here is I, I, I completely understand what you're saying. I, I personally invest in a couple of different items. And if you are not, I, I, have, I search for Tacoma and I search for Mustang every single day on Facebook marketplace and Craigslist. And if it's a good deal, you have to be the guy that sees it within 30 minutes. If it's, a, if it's, a, if it's not a good deal, it'll sit up there for three weeks, you know? So I, I feel ex I know exactly what you're saying. It's just, you know, that's, I, I love, what the text message notification. And I love the fact that somebody like you has been sitting around poaching all the good teams every time they pop up. And now you've taken that and said, well, I'm going to actually provide a service to the public and put it up for auction and, and then let somebody get paid for the hard work and not just say, like Jay said, me too. But most teams that are orphaned, you think nor right off the rip, they must be terrible because the person wants to get out. It is. It, it, it's a perception. Orphan is it's a perception, but it's just not how, how it works. It's just, it, it just bad, it's just a bad name. You know, nobody wants an orphan, you right. know? <laughs> right. 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 It's better than saying Parents didn't even want them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So. All right. So you have this, you have a package that you're selling. Now it's $99 that you're selling for 60, 59. It's $59. And you're yeah. getting the text notification uh, we have a partnership with our friends at Roster Watch. I don't mm -hmm. know how familiar you are with them. Sure, heard of them, but not very familiar. Okay. Um, they decided to get involved with us. You'll be receiving for that fifty-nine dollars a one-year pro subscription to Roster Watch, which costs fifty-nine dollars. 
they have what 60,000 subscribers or whatever. And you're getting that for free from us. Um, you'll be able to bid, buy, sell. You'll also be getting uh, hot boxes from us. A hot box will be on our front page where you're going to get one day of where it's scrolling the hottest teams available. So you don't even have to dig into the site. You're going to just see that. So we're, we're providing a ton of value right there. When you say um, hottest teams, that's the ones that everybody else is bidding on kind of thing. What, what, no, what pushes if you the think you got a hot team, team and you want, you want it right on the front page, of our website, we'll post it up for you. I uh, gotcha. And, and like, the, the hot box will scroll the people that want, that think their teams are hot. So gotcha. in order to get on the website, you have to at, at minimum have the membership, correct? Correct. So November 1st, we're opening up our membership window. We are going um, on Sirius XM radio in December for a pretty heavy ad package. Uh, you'll have to hear my goofy voice on, on, on uh, the fantasy channel. Um, but that's the way it goes. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So before we do that, we're opening it up to our audiences, our FFPC players, anybody that wants, we're providing a 40% discount the first year off memberships before we go live on the radio. So there's other packages that are available. Uh, you can choose a $49 package where you just get to bid, buy and sell. One of the other features of our site. And these are for a year, Watch. correct? One year memberships. Okay. Correct. So roster watch, um, who has a huge radio show, um, which I'll be on with on their radio show on October 31st. I'm pretty excited about, but they are providing us with exclusive dynasty rankings next year or actually starting January 1st. So they have never done dynasty rankings. They are a sponsor of the Reese senior bowl. They go, they, they do some footwork and they are lining up with us and going to be providing us with exclusive rankings. So, and content. So our site for $49, if you don't want the text packaging, which will regularly be $99 for $49, you go on our site, you know, you got content, you got rankings and you go out and bid, buy, sell and do whatever you want to do. That sounds good to me. Yes, sir. Um, all right. So what, uh, I know there's other things that go along with, um, this eBay, eBay style, uh, deal here that, that, you know, just the selling and buying of teams is, I know that you have some other things going on as well. We uh, do with, with the website. We do. We, uh, we created something which I think is even more exciting than anything I said. It's called the dynasty depot leaderboard. So, Let's do an exercise here. You buy a $77 team and you buy a dog and you pay five bucks and win the auction. Pay five bucks for the team. And you're going to work it in whatever. You paid five bucks for it. Who cares, right? So every week, so you'll, you'll build that team for the year. The season will start in 2021. And you built that $77 team into a really good team. You paid five bucks for it. Every week, your points will transfer from FFPC to the Dynasty Depot leaderboard in best ball, super flex, super flex, best ball, and standard. So if you buy a standard team, five bucks you bought, it'll hit that board. It doesn't matter if I bought a team for 2,500. It doesn't matter. You're going to hit the Dynasty Depot leaderboard because you purchased the team on Dynasty Depot. So now you do well on that leaderboard. It'll play, pay 10 places. First place is going to be an FFPC $2,000 main event seat where you could actually spend $5 on Dynasty Depot, win a seat, and win $500,000. It can happen. So just this because is, you bought a team. Happen. This is just based on like total points of that team, or is it like FFPC where it's, are you getting victory points? or how? how no does victory points. Work? It doesn't matter. You're going to score 180 this week. That'll, that, that team scored right, 180. Okay. It, it's going to transfer over every Monday. You're going to be able to look at our leaderboard and see where you are, what transferred over. So a total points post. leaderboard is the Dynasty Depot uh, leaderboard. That's Correct. how that works. On any team that was purchased on Dynasty Depot at any amount. Amount means nothing. Gotcha. So uh, there'll be, I'm sure you're familiar with the football guys contest, sure. another half a million dollar contest. I think third place is a $500 dynasty team bought for you by dynasty depot. 
this is free. You know, this is something we're giving away. This is, you're not paying to enter this contest, nothing. Yeah, I like, that's really, really incredible. And I mean, you really got a better chance of buying a $5 team, winning the leaderboard and winning the $500,000 uh, football guys championship than hitting the main lottery that goes around anyway. It, 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 <laughs> got a better true. chance of doing that than hitting the lottery. <laughs> I'm sure. It, it's true. And, I, um, and we and when the, when the lottery numbers get up there, that's when everybody goes and buys twenty dollars worth of tickets and splits it with their friends. <laughs> you know, so I mean, right. you got a better chance of winning winning through your service than you do of playing the lottery and scratching the right ones. Right. I mean, we anticipate you know some five hundred dollar teams might go for a hundred bucks. Well, if you buy a five hundred dollar team, you got to win in the first six years to break even. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if you pay a hundred bucks for that team, you're buying yourself some more time. I mean, there's bargains to be had. So listen, it's going to be exciting. And we figure, you know, the smart people are going to figure out ways and smart people are going to buy teams, you know, at discounts and smart people are going to buy teams that are going to win for the next three years and, and, and overpay and people are going to make profits. So, something we touched on earlier is how I see this going is what do people like to do the most? They like to draft, right? People like draft. Sure. So you're you're drafting maiden teams in the off season. Why? Because you got nothing to do and you're on eight (laughs) hours, slow clocks and you're pissed off. You don't draft in three days and blah, 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 you know, but you do it. So, I mean, like, so COVID hit this year. So uh, I drafted about 40 maiden teams because I had nothing to do. And uh, yeah. so what we think is going to happen is the good drafters out there are going to draft teams and they're going to put them up for sale immediately without ever playing it down, looking for a profit. So you're saying Eight. you don't even, you, they don't even, they, you, you, you do the draft in, uh, let's say May, March, March yeah. and then you're yeah. saying you, you sell it in July. Sell it after the the, the round twenty pick goes. Out. <laughs> okay, so as soon as the uh, draft room closes, I basically think paying are- for a draft consultant, and but that person. Right, that- we need to get in on this. So you guys can pay us to draft you teams. Right, I mean, listen, people are good at this, and people aren't good at this. You know, I know some people that are in thirty leagues of mine, and they're in the last place in every league, and their team. <laughs> you know, it's a mess. You know, they, listen. Like anything else, you know, when you're talking about gambling or whatever, there's people that are good at it and people that aren't good at it. The good drafters are going to put these teams up for sale without ever playing it down. Yeah, I've, I like that. I like that spin that just that get, it gives you a whole nother layer of, of things to do and to keep, you know, like you said, what's the best part? Drafting. So if you're a, a drafter and you're good at it and you, and, and you can find the market and, you know, it's just going to be like anything else. There's going to be a market of what kind of teams sell the bet. You know what I mean? Of course. Uh, of course. This is, this is, uh, this is spicy um, the, <laughs> and for multiple reasons, obviously, but you're, I don't, I, I love, I love the draft as much as, or more than most people in, on this earth. I'm running out of time to manage these teams, you know, right. So you can do the draft and you could potentially sell for a profit. And then also you have the ultimate market swings because you do the draft, um, in March early. Yeah. You know, like you said, you know, you do a draft in March, you do it early. You get a couple of running backs, rookie running backs, with Clyde Edwards had layer. You get him into eighth, ninth, 10th round of the startup in March because nobody's really on him as much. And then, you know, come draft time, come bigger, you know, come later on in the summer, all of a sudden people are loving him. Sure. Now all of a sudden you got a spike in your team or, you know, like say you got Nick Chubb and, and Kareem Hunt or something. You got Kareem Hunt, Nick Chubb goes on, you know, blows his knee out in the off season. We're talking about, you know, in in OTAs and you got that backup running back who spikes and now you can put your team up for sale and get more, you know, get 25% more than you could have gotten the day before that other injury goes down. This, this is going to be uh, really, really Interesting. It's a great point. It, it's going, it, it all leads back to what I said originally. I'm creating action for the off season. About that action. Uh, that, that really, you really just put it all together for us. One, one question I got as far as if I did the, I, I did the startup, right? 
what happened what about the deposit for the following year and how does that go with auctioning okay. off through the F, like with your partnership with ffpc yeah. what happens with that part I hate when people ask me this question because it's so confusing. The people that aren't familiar with that, people that are familiar with FFPC are used to the deposit. It's not an issue. So you draft a team, let's say a $250 team, and you pay a $100 deposit, and you draft your maiden team. And First you of all, I like for, the deposit. I like that's why I'm on. That's why I play on FFPC because it, that's why the, the leagues don't fold up. I, I appreciate the deposit. Right. I appreciate having to pay extra money before you trade your first round pick. I appreciate Correct. all of that. So if you don't like that part, you sh- you don't you don't you ha- either haven't played enough seasons of dynasty to understand why that's important, or, or you can't don't trust you're not, you, <laughs> or you're not playing enough money for enough money True. for it to matter, or like Jay right. said, you're really a swindler and you were going to screw somebody anyway. Um, I, I think I think a lot of it. The point you made is the higher stakes players respect that they don't want problems. Sure. They don't want to wait on the leagues. Right. So you buy a two hundred fifty dollar team maiden, right? And you pay an FFPC a two hundred fifty dollar maiden requires a one hundred dollar deposit. So you buy it. You draft your maiden team. You put it up on Dynasty Depot. Uh, for 350 bucks. Okay. The new owner must post that $100 deposit. That that's where it, it, it transfers at that point. So, so on purchase of any team, it doesn't like you, you for any team, for any class, for any um, price class, the new owner, when they purchase from you, they have to go and say that well, I'm sure it's all linked together upon purchase. It pops up on FFP website as a, as a um, team that they own, but they have to pay the next year. They have to pay the deposit on it. They have to pay the deposit for that year that they're yeah. about to play. In. It gets you your, your deposit back. We get the get you deposit back plus the other hundred plus the other hundred. Right. So you, you it's a profit. You you're whole plus. Yeah. So something else that we talked about here when we talked about credibility. So to establish credibility, it goes like this. If you sell a team, I don't pay you. I don't handle your money. I don't touch your money. The only money that Dynasty Depot gets involved with is the membership fee. So you check out on, first of all, you have to worry about geolocation of stuff, right? Because there's there's no, no states, right? Of course. So, where we're handling it is, and if you sell a team and you click, somebody clicks buy it and you, they are immediately transferred to FFPC to finish the transaction. So when you sign on to Dynasty Depot, if you're an FFPC member, you're going to just use your FFPC credentials. It's a single sign on process. If you are not, the Dynasty Depot member, you are required, it's going to send you to FFPC to have an FFPC account first. So your money as a seller will not come from me. It will go directly into the quote unquote, extremely reliable FFPC account. You will do, if you request a transfer, you'll do it from FFPC. You want to buy more teams, which is probably what you're going to do. You're <laughs> going to do it with FFPC. All your money is handled by FFPC in their accounts. So the profits that you make from selling a team on your site end up in your FFPC account, basically. Correct. Correct. Love it. It's done for a bunch of reasons, but really comes back to the credibility reasons. Sure. I don't want to handle it. Nobody knows me. Okay. They know FFPC. They know they're solid. Yeah. So I took that, I, we took that out of, out of play. I like yeah. it. Let's, um, so let's talk about putting your team on your website. Um, how, how's the listing work? What, how, how do you set the listing price? Is there a market that's like, says, oh, your team may be worth this or this kind of like a real estate market no, or is there? We were going to do that. Uh, we were going to put a grading scale on. I don't want to do that. So subjective. It, it, it is, man. Okay. It is. And so and if you're all over guys if, like, right. If you're all over dynasty Twitter and you take the opinions of all those guys and you just love, you know, for instance, all the wide receivers and you hate running backs, for instance, 
you know, if that's the grading scale, then then a team like that's going to get a high grade. Whereas like most people who right. play really like running backs, and so yeah, I could see how you wouldn't want to like try to tell Jay, someone I, I, what I the think value really, of a team is. You really took the words right out of my mouth. It's not oh, my meatloaf. Business. You said it, <laughs> meatloaf, baby. Took we the words meatloaf. right out of your mouth. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Must man. have been when you were kissing me. <laughs> I wasn't kissing you, Jay. I wasn't doing it, brother. So. No, no, definitely. No, we do a thought right. We now. do a uh, we do a mid season meatloaf <laughs> podcast every every season. Uh, so we we, we throw we a lot of trip. yeah. Because I didn't know if you know huge... meatloaf's a huge fantasy football guy. Oh I yeah, do, I do know that. I do know. That. <laughs> so I'll let you know when, when I see his account pop up on Dynasty Depot. We'll we'll get them all on together. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Please do. Please do. Jay said yeah. something about running backs versus wide receiver values, and you were going about how you don't have a grading skill on your website. Yeah, no, no, we're, we're, we're not doing that, but we were, we were saying something else like when I seriously lost my train of thought about signing up. When, when you're signing up, like I said, everything goes through FFPC. Right. Your location, when you go to deposit money to buy a team, it'll go through FFPC, the geolocation. Everything is going to be run by them. They're professionals at it. Um, we're not. So when it's, you – It's not – when you list a team, then like how, how do you how do you decide how to list it? Like is like we we're go. talking about the grading there scale. We go. Thank you. Is it? Yeah. So remember, I got how you. I said yes, you do. I took so, all the words. You're out an FF. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Nils. <laughs> we we want to sell a team on on your site. Take us through uh, posting the. the yeah. The every time you talk, I forget what I'm going to say. <laughs> all right. So being that you are. Logged in with FFPC, your account, your five teams will be in a drop down box automatically onto our site. So your teams are listed there. Anything you own with FFPC will be listed on my site. You'll have a drop down box to select a team. You'll select that team, you'll hit the sale button, you'll set a reserve, you will pay $5 to post that team. So if you want to set a $77 team at $2,000, you're going to be wasting $5. Okay, we want people selling them at reasonable prices. Okay, we have to try to regulate that because we don't want the site bastardized like, oh, another $77 guy for $1,400, you know, stop. Right, you know, yeah. First prize is $300, <laughs> you know, stop. Yeah. But you're going to win for the next that. 10 years. Maybe you will. Right, right. And break right. even. Got it. Yep. So maybe you will. Maybe you will. So they'll have there'll be a buy it now and then you'll set your auction time. And it'll work just like that. You'll get notifications as bid the bidding process is going. And it'll it'll work very similar to eBay. Listen, we want the site traffic. So people are going to be on our site constantly. We have um somehow I was able to cut this deal. Um with the you're familiar with the D hotel in Las Vegas? I'm not. I am not, no. Swanky little party hotel. And they're opening a five billion dollar resort on the twenty eighth of this month that I actually have to put a tuxedo on and go to. Um, I was able to talk them to them about the product. They liked it so much they became our site sponsor. So we actually have a Las Vegas hotel as a site sponsor that's gonna advertise rooms and stuff like that. People have seen this as, and everybody says the same thing. Why the hell didn't I think of this? It's pretty simple. Yeah. And, and it, it really is. It's pretty simple. But I think just think there's a need for it, man. Sure. I just think there is. Yeah, what are the so, uh, auction times that you can set your team to be on for? One, three, and five days. So you want to you get it out there for five bucks. That that five dollars is refundable if your team when your team sells. Gotcha. Okay, so you can you can repost. So if you're the you're five dollars is essentially just a safeguard to stop. Don't be an asshole. That that's all it is. <laughs> I don't even want the money. I don't even care if you don't pay it. Just don't be an asshole. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't need your five dollars. <laughs> yeah, I don't need your five dollars. You better collect that up front because then you won't get you won't get it otherwise. <laughs> now I'm gonna I'm gonna get it, Jay Wayne. I'm gonna get, get it. it. Trust all me. All right. He I'm gets it with get baseball it. bats. All right. So just right. to go over this one time, if me and Big Co, who we we have several teams together, let's say one of our two fifty teams, we want to sell it, we want to move to a twelve hundred dollar team. It's a good team. Maybe it just won the championship this year. It's got 
three or four really good high end first and second round running backs that are in startups right now. And then, you know, a bunch of good receivers and the bench is decent. And we got, we got our first round picks and we say, we want to sell that thing for 400 bucks. And we, and right. then we, we get the 400 bucks. So then we, all that money then just comes into our, we get the $400 plus our deposit back that comes into our FFPC account to put towards whatever we want, whether we want to cash it out or put it into another league. Correct. And then that $250 at the 400. So the guy paid 500, right? $400 for the team. He had to put the hundred dollar deposit down. Sure. So the hundred dollars will go in, in, in. That's the new deposit, the 250. That's his new re up for the year. And you get yours. Gotcha. Correct. And so it'll the, be deposited there. So let's say I bought their team, right? So I, I paid, um, the four hundred dollars to either win the auction or just buy it now, whatever they set it to be, and then um, so then I pay the deposit. They get their money back into their FFPC account. I play on the first year. Now the next year, I'm paying just the regular buy-in at two fifty. You're paying to just the two fifty because your deposit's already on hold over there. You're just paying two fifty like everybody else. You paid a premium for that team. Listen. There's math involved in this stuff, boys. You know, Absolutely. you're going to look at the dollar amounts and, you know, what's it worth? And, and like you said, what picks has it got? You know, how long can I win it? You know, let me ask you a question. For a $250 team, you're going to pay a two or $300 upcharge to win $1,100 possibly this year. Second place, you're still in the money. And you've you got a really bright future. I mean, it, sure. Yeah. It, it, and another thing, I'm too. going to. Yeah, yeah, another thing too. I mean, it comes into back elementary f- fantasy football. Even if it's not dynasty, if your if your bench is good, those players aren't in somebody else's starting lineup, right? So if, you're, right. if so, you're if you're looking through an auction and you're like, "Oh, this team right here is nasty," um, maybe not necessarily from top to bottom, but just got studs everywhere, or just you know, just a really nasty team. Of course, that means obviously you have a good chance of winning because your team is good. Yeah. But if you got all the good players, if somebody comes out of a draft, of course, again, like if you somebody drafted in March and comes out and, and, and by the time August gets here, they got the, the you know, the rookie Alvin Kamara's of the world and those types of things, or, you know, the scout CEHs and all those things who just all of a sudden they're first round dynasty startups picks before the first game was ever played. You know, that's, that's, that's good stuff. Would- those types, the, the, if your team is loaded, then the rest of the league is depleted. If, so that if you look at, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, that would just lead, lead me to a question about, you know, knowing what is going on with the rest of the league on a team you're about to bid on. Is there a way to see that league and see what other teams in that league's rosters look like? Guess what, Jay? You took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> okay. Two no. out of three ain't bad. Yeah. No, there is not. <laughs> Okay, so we have taken off your team name. Okay, it'll say Dynasty 250. Number one. Team, number team 101. Yeah. Right. No, we're, we're, we're not – you can't – it's not possible to do that. Okay, so, you know, you're going to have to – but when you're buying an orphan team and, geez, they sell a thousand of them, you know, if you're buying an orphan team, you, you're going in blind there also. Okay. So, you know what you got as a roster, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, could there be some powerhouse? Yeah, but you know what? If he's a powerhouse now and your roster's right and you got the picks right, he's not going to be a powerhouse. You know. And we've all had plenty of dynasty teams that thought you were a powerhouse going in, and then all of a sudden week six you're looking around and like, what the fuck just right. happened? Um, like, no, <laughs> no, right. right, there's no short thing. But the better players – are going to figure out some sort of algorithm, you know, because that's what happens in gambling. That's what happens sure. in casinos and cards. Somebody's going to figure out, you know, player to- values, pick values versus what I'm going to pay in this auction versus Absolutely. what the prize is. What's my projection. Somebody's going to figure this out. Right. And yeah, this, they'll be this counting players, players basically that. like counting cards, counting cards. If there's a profit to be made, they're going to dig in. I'll tell you right now which ones are going to get the most money. It's the guys that come out of a startup with like four four picks next year in the first round. 
those types of people, those types of the trades that it takes to get that done, a lot of people don't have the nerve to to, to pull them off or the or patience the time. to send the offers yeah. or the time to send the offers and make it happen during the you startup process. you got to send process. a lot of offers. So a person that's sitting there on the buy side of your website gets to be lazy and just swipe a credit card. And the person that did all the work gets to take the profits from it. And I'll, I'll, be, the, I'll be one of them doing it. Yeah. And for you guys, like you, it's, it's just, there's so many levels and different tiers for your, for your site. Like what it does is that guy who can be lazy now also knows like, all right, well I, again, I, I have another secondary market. I just bought this from a marketplace. I can put this same team back up on this marketplace a year later if this doesn't work out and maybe it's for a net loss of a couple bucks. That's a, that's a great point, right? You, you can minimize your or losses. Or huge winnings, you know. You know. Or, 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 you know, when it came in third place and, and, and you had some bad luck with injuries or you don't like the way something's going, the quarterback isn't what you thought the quarterback was, yeah. you know, the Carson Wentz's of the world, but sure. whatever. Oh, uh, well, hitting know, home so, there yeah. for you. Is there a way – is there like a comment section? Can you give like a little write-up about your team? No, no. The teams will be posted. So here's here's how it's going to look. The teams are going to be posted by position, quarterback, blah 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 blah, all the way down to kicker, um, and the picks. It'll all be listed right out. Uh, It's real clear. I got to tell you something. Um, The website is one of the coolest websites I've ever seen. It it is between the logo. You see the logo here, the Dynasty Depot logo. The, the, the logo, the functionality of this website. The cool thing about this is I don't have investors in this. So this is just me and a buddy across the street that were drinking one night that thought about this and it's all our own money. So we didn't have to answer to anybody. We spent the money right. Okay. We, we cut no, no corners. This website, I'm telling you, is sharp. It is sharp and, it, you know, it'll rival DraftKings website in, in how cool this thing is. And the website is dynastydepot.com. You can find Nelson to keep following along with all his updates and see what he's up to at the Dynasty Depot on Twitter. Um, and this is our guy, Nelson. And when does yeah, this man, site so, go live? So he, here's, here's what, what I'd love. 81 days, do. 8 hours, 9 minutes, 28 seconds. Shit, you got it up. So <laughs> it. We, we want people to go onto the website between now and November 1st and simply put your email in. Okay. Your email will trigger a promo code that will be sent to you the week before November 1st. Okay. That promo code is going to be good from November 1st to December 1st. Once I start blowing this thing out nationally, internationally, whatever on Sirius XM, the, that promo is going away. Okay. We're giving it away for, for, for your listeners and the people you know, they've been cool with us, the people over at GOAT and, and, and Roster Watch and, and all their stuff. You know, people have been cool with us. We want to help their listeners. We want to get them in, get them familiar with the product. So I need you to put your website, your, your, your email address in. Just going to send you a promo code, whether you sign up or not. But the website will be open on November 1st for membership purposes only. You will be able to start listing teams, I believe, at 6 a.m. on January 4th. Um, we might open it up for listing a day before, but auctions will begin on January 4th. Now, one of the things to remember here, that week 16 ends on Sunday, I believe, January 3rd. And you, can, you have to re-up your team. You cannot just say, I'm selling my team right now on the next day. You have to pay your Two hundred and fifty dollars for twenty twenty one to sell your team. Makes okay, sense. You keep it, you have to. It's right. it's the only way it'll work. So if you want to sell the team, maybe you only get two hundred for it. You know, whatever. Sure. But you know, walking away from FFPC, walking away an orphan in the team. Um, you know, you're walking away from your deposit. The FFPC orphan orphan page is it's going to basically go away. It's all going to go to us. If, if you want to orphan your team, it's going to, it's going to end up with us. Well, I, th- I think you, uh, 
I personally think you have a winner here. Like I said, we, we, uh, if we didn't believe in what you were selling here, we wouldn't have had you on. Not like this is some coveted show or anything like that, but we big co's in the middle of a move. I got surgery tomorrow. Jay Wayne's got a ton of things. We all got lives and kids and we were just going to take the week off, but we, we kind of got in contact with you and we really believed in what you were selling here. So thank you. you know, thank you we, so we, much. We appreciate you taking the time to come on here and we appreciate you for, for doing what you're, what you're creating right now. I love there's So like you said, so many levels and aspects to what you're doing. I love the day trader aspect of this, of just giving you more fun in the off season of just something else to do gives you more opportunity to draft startup teams and just unload them and figure that whole thing out. And there's, there's just so many. And then, you know, for anybody who's just been in the, Trench is taking grenades with teams in FFPC and maybe you want like me and Big Co would like to move up a couple of and a couple of our teams just we got a bunch of them I'd like to turn some of the 250s into 750s and you know maybe sure. get up into some of those 1200s so this is a great and we think we have some good teams built and you know we're we think we're good team builders so this gives you know so many people different avenues of different ways to have fun and make some money right it's yeah like- I, I agree if it, you know, that's one of the reasons why we play dynasty is because the off season, you know, you talked about how the off season is kind of down and there's not much to do, but at least with dynasty, it gives you a reason to stay engaged in the off season. And then this, this is like just even more opportunity, more motivation to do a startup, more motivation to, to, to sell your team and try something different. It's just, it just opens up so many more avenues it, it in does. the off season. It, 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 and say say you want to, you want to move up to a five hundred dollar team, right? Well, you know there might be a hundred five hundred dollar teams sitting on my site. Maybe you can cherry pick and bottom pick and get something for one hundred and fifty and get in a five hundred dollar league and work the Jane Way and Magic, right? Sure. So you know instead of ponying up for the full thing, so I think it's a way to to move yourself up. You know. Good point. Five hundred dollar teams that you might see them up for sale for three thousand because the guy yeah. just won this year. I won three grand, and maybe he's got the picks to, to justify it. Sure, you might see a guy that you know has a hundred dollar reserve on it. You know, sure. you're going to bid on it. You know, we don't know oh. what the reserve is. You don't know what the reserve is. You don't I'll know what a, his, his I'll be a user. Is. I'll be a user for sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Well, we're. Uh, you, you want to stick around for a second and talk about some FFPC and how, how you do it or, or you got to run? What do you, what do you want to do? I'm Man, it, I'd love to, whatever you guys want to talk about. Thank you. I, I got a around. quick question uh, with, with yeah. all the leagues that you got to, it's a two parter. Is there, is there, is it possible there's a player that you don't have on one of your teams? And if so, no. who, who, no. Do you, who do you not have enough of on, on your teams? How about that then? It, it's funny. Um, I have, out of 110 teams, I have one share of A.J. Brown. Wow. I noticed that. FFPC has just put a new thing on their site. I don't know if you saw it. There, there's a button on your home homepage. Uh, uh, it's called, uh, it's either called percentage or something. Ownership. It's called ownership. And you could click on it, and it gives you every player and how many teams you have him on. That's cool. A.J. Brown, I have one share of. I think me and yeah. Big Co are batting a hundred percent on Ezekiel Elliott. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it seems like I have a lot of you know because I draft a lot and you guys draft a lot and and it seems like you know you go in round six you go to your guy right Absolutely. you're looking for your guy I'm looking for DJ Chark in round six mm-hmm. that's my guy you know mm-hmm. I have two million shares of DJ Chark that's sure. basically killing me so far but <laughs> <laughs> but you got to get your guy. It's right, my let's, guy. <laughs> let's talk about a little bit how how you play FFPC, and we'll you know we'll try to keep it keep it moving here and and yeah. get out of here. Um, so basically, let's just start from the beginning in a startup strategy of you know how do you handle the first part of your FFPC drafts? Like obviously, the first round is kind of the first round. I mean, there's obviously a million things you could do in the first round, but like the second and third round seems to be where you know how, how do you how, let's just say how do you play your first three rounds in FFPC? Are you a big trader? Um, how are you, how, what are you moving? Or do you, do you like to get, try to get as many firsts as you can and, and leverage you trying to sell rookie picks in that? Where do you start selling rookie picks? All those kind of okay, things. So I kind of have a philosophy with this, right? You try and everybody's the same thing. You're trying to draft the team that wins now and you're trying to draft the team for the future. Right. Mm-hmm. So 
I got to come out of that first round, the, the, the draft with two first round picks because, and I'm utilizing now some of my teams right now that are four and one, three and two and scoring well and look good. I'm using that second first round pick right now and solidifying things. Cause now, now's the time week five is when people are, yeah, I better start getting rid of some of this stuff and start looking at next year. There's bargains to be had, but you, you got to have picks. If you don't have first round picks, you're in trouble. You can't just trade players, right? Cause you're probably weakening yourself somewhere. Correct. Well, to, see, match, yeah, I mean, to, to get stronger somewhere or a it, position of need. Correct. Yeah, yeah, especially in these leagues where it's so it is like I mean, obviously you want to be as top heavy as you can in general, but you know, you get in deeper leagues and depth really can start to pay off. And these FFPCs, like we talked about with shorter benches, you, you have to be a little bit more top heavy and you can't spend a whole lot of time waiting on benches, which we'll talk a little bit about more of that down the road. But yeah, for it sure, is. I feel you. I, I really feel like my strategy is always to somewhere get a second uh, get a second first round pick. And Listen, it's easy. You draw one, one, two, three. It's easy to come out of that, right? I'll take one, one. I'll move down to one eleven. Give me your first round pick. You know, go ahead and you take take McCaffrey, right? So that's easy. But you know, first of all, I'd never trade, never trade until I'm on the clock. Okay, I can't anticipate what's going to be. The guy offers me a one for six five, right? I don't know who's going to be there. I don't sure. I, so I, I won't do it. But if that guy is there at six five, that I want, I'll take him. If it's not, somebody's probably taking that pick because somebody wants something in that area. That that sixth round where most of the first round picks and maidens are traded for in the sixth round, you know, you count on one hand the people that that you're happy that you draft there. Yeah, yeah, you know, definitely. You know that. I guess the steal of this year's maidens, which maybe not after the other night, but I mean, Keenan Allen was dropping to 6'10", 6'11", in all the sure. maidens this year. And, you know, because who the hell knew Herbert was going to be Herbert, right? Right, yeah. With the bright future, they're thinking, you know, I got Tyrod Taylor for the next four years throwing to him. But going back to what you said, I got I to gotta come out. I got to have a second pick because not only does it really not hurt my team, it gives me the flexibility – for the future, or if I want to use it now, which if I if you want to use it now because you got a hole, or you know you think you got you need that one more player to put you over the top. People, I, I tend not to trade for holes if I got a yeah. hole. I, okay. I tend to trade for strength. Um, in a super flex league or something like, I might trade for that fourth quarterback even though I don't really need it. You know, I I, t- I try to trade for strength. Okay. When, when, yeah. when you got a hole, you probably got a problem. And now you're trading your future to solve the problem and hopefully plug the hole, which we all know nothing's guaranteed, right? So sure. I, 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 that's personally my strategy. Well, let me hit something real quick that I thought you said was really good. When, when you somehow, some way come out of your startup with a second first round pick, um, for initially, I weren't sure if you were trying to say I get two first round startup yeah, picks, me and get two two yeah. monster players. Mm-mm, but mm-mm. when you said two, oh, I, I can you know further along, we knew I knew what you were talking about. But the part where you said it probably didn't hurt my team after I'd done a handful of startups, especially the Casey and I did two in one year, and let's say, um, uh, gosh, the, what's the um. What's the New York Giants wide receiver? Not Slayton, but the one that's a little Sterling old. Shepard. Sterling Shepard, good, good call. So Sterling Shepard goes in like the he was, it was his rookie year. He goes in the fourth round of one startup and the eighth round of another startup, and they were like a month apart. It had nothing to do with anything he did. It was he didn't nobody got hurt or he didn't get it was it wasn't even preseason yet. It was early, and. It was pure preference, and every we talk about this on our show all the time. You're in a 12 man league. There's 11 other people. Every 12 man league is different because you're you know everybody's preferences on players are different. I like what you said. You can get away. You can find a way to get another first round next next year's first in a draft, and it 
doesn't have to hurt. It, you, you don't necessarily have to give up anything. And I, because you can be backing up from the fourth round, fourth round to the fifth round and get a first and get the same guy you were going to draft in the fourth. You got a free first round pick. We, I mean, you know, you we talked about do all the time. Sell, you talked about selling the sixth round pick guy, you know, you, there's all kind of ways in that startup to get another first round pick and it doesn't even necessarily have to hurt you. Yeah, like I mean, anywhere from one round one to six, if you can move back in that round a considerable amount and you feel good about it, and then probably even pick up, you know, a, a, a seventh or eighth pick if you're moving, you know, in that four to six range, you could probably pick up a seventh or eighth startup pick here and then gain a first rounder. You're not really listen, losing that much. Listen, when you go into to it, right? So it's it's the unknown, right? Every 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 pick is the unknown. Did you know McCaffrey was going to miss half the season? Did you know that probably not coming back, carrying the ball 30 times off that ankle injury for the next five weeks? True. You, know, you don't know. So yeah. if you don't know something, why not hedge it? I do know that if I have an extra first round pick, if things go my way, I could secure something. I could plug a hole. I could be sitting on 101s next year. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. So when you don't know, Listen, if you're making a run and, and, and you have that pick in the bank, it's going to help yeah, you well, make the run. Exactly. In the bank, you you're, don't collecting know you don't know. you're collecting currency. You're collecting currency to be able to do whatever you want to do. Correct. I, yeah. I think that's a better strategy. I just, it's worked for me. So, Big Co, you got a question? No, I like that. I, let's get out of the startup draft because uh, we could stay there all night. Um, the short bench part, do you have, obviously, the more you play, and I've, you've got way more leagues than me, but I've, I've, I'm only on like 12 dynasty teams, but I care about each one of them. But the more you have and the more money you put into them, that waters them down, um, you know, you, so, but the short bench in FFPC, um, how do you play your... Uh, a couple guys that you like that you want to hang on to. Do, do you have a couple of the, do you have an instance that might pop into your head of a player that you were like, I should have just held on six more weeks, but I'm juggling at the bottom. Obviously every dynasty team, you like to have an opening at the bottom, but if, the, if you got a 30 band roster, it doesn't matter really if you have an opening or not. If you have a 20 man roster and you got to start 10 of them every week that, you know, that means the roster, the, the waiver wire is pretty full and because of the FFPC making you have a kicker and a defense and a, and a quarterback every week. Um, the waiver wire is always a good time. So how do you play the waiver wire? How do you play um, the a shorter j- bench? How do you hang on to younger guys or do you, you know, obviously every team's different, but what is your general strategy there? Well, I'll try to stretch the bench. I'll never carry more than one quarterback. Okay. Okay. Um, because you can stream quarterbacks easy enough, right? For sure. And it's getting easier FF, every year. Right. And FFPC does have three IR spots. So if you get somebody hurt, that's going to loosen up a spot. I mean, geez, I got one team where the IR is filled, and I have four other guys on IR, and I can't even cut them. Mm-hmm. I have Eckler and Chubb. I, I just got to carry them on the, on, on the main roster. Yep. So. I think you try to lengthen your bench on, on the quarterback situation. You know, obviously you never carry two D's, but I always say it, you know, there's always two teams that's got two D's or mm-hmm. draft them 13th and 14th round. Give me Pittsburgh and Buffalo. Yeah. You know, and then they've ditched them already, you know, sure. because they, they need the bench space. Um, holding on to, to the, there's, there's been like, I'm, I really, I'm a holder. Okay. But there's been a couple guys that recently I, I've cut loose because I'm trying to win. Like I've cut DJ Dallas in mm-hmm. a few. Like I kind of like his skill set and might come back to get me, but it's a, it's a long way home for sure. him to get on the field a lot. Um, I had to cut Devin Duvernay out of Baltimore a couple times. That's Casey's yeah. boy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, Van I, I Jefferson, got, Van Jefferson's another guy. No, that's t- no, you know, no, 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 no. Not moving tough, him. Tough to hold though. in these short um, benches. I'm holding him. I'm, is, I'm holding him. Okay. He, he Not, is, don't see he a lot of Van hold. Jefferson love. I love it. Well, yeah, I mean, is, we, we, we're holding them in every, we got him in every single deeper he's league and we he's had good. him in, we had him in a decent amount of FFPCs, but by, by week two or three, he was, he was on the, he was, he hit the wire. Yeah, no, he, you, he, you you start to see that. I mean, you know, like in the beginning, you're looking at the wire, right? You're looking at the top five names and see if your guy's there, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. 
you know, now it was funny because now FFPC waivers changed, right? To Sunday so they, morning. Sunday, 10 o'clock. So I was, and, and we had a Tuesday thing. So which extended, it didn't change the waiver wire priorities or the, how they list the waiver wires. So Travis Fulgram from Eagles was probably 50 names down. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Today, Gotta search for him. <laughs> today he was at the top because sure. they refreshed the page and whatever. And it's 10 07. I'm going to see how much Fulgham that I have because he's really good, by the way. Um, from my alma mater, um, Old Dominion. Nice. He, uh, he's really good. So, the, you know, listen, bidding, um, I'm going to look like a hero this year because. I have 60 some shares of Mike Davis and I bid up to $600 on him on most of them. I blew. I liked Mike, Mike Davis when he was in Chicago. I thought he should have been the starter there. I, I think he's a really good player. And when C-Mac went down and he was getting a nod, I, I knew it. Okay. Now you're gambling every time you bid five, $600, you know, geez, how many people bid $300 on Deion Lewis, right? When Barkley Absolutely. went down, mm-hmm. but if you could try to identify somebody, I, I, I make sure I get him. Okay. I'm not going to half-ass bid and bid 174. You know, exactly. I'm, I'm not going to do it. If sure. I want somebody, they're going to be on my roster when I wake up the next morning. Yeah. And I'll Casey live and I, with the decision. Casey and I rock the same way. We, we're we not tight on that uh, FFPC waiver wire budget if there's somebody we want to buy. But that sometimes that comes back to bite you because those short benches will – it plays games with people's heads. And one of our teams last uh, – Two years ago, um, no, last year, rookie Noah Fant's rookie season. Somebody drafted Noah Fant in the first round, and week eight, they dropped him. And somebody had some money, and they bought him. But Casey and I would spend all our money already. You know, so, like, you you never know what short bench bench is that short. You never know when you're going to be able to strike on somebody that's so, – like, there's no reason at all Noah Fant's I, on I the I bought run. last week, before this week, last week – for nine hundred and seventy-two dollars, a certain Pittsburgh wide receiver, Chase. Correct, nine seventy-two. Because now you're looking at dynasty, right? So you're not dropping and adding a ton of players. You know, there's two or three at the end of your bench that'll be flipping around, but sixteen, seventeen people, probably less than that. Fifteen, they're not going anywhere. You're not dropping them. It, mm-hmm. occasionally people get impatient just like you said yep and i'm like really you're gonna give me this guy i will spend all my money yeah and i'll take my chances and see how this guy works out for me for the next 10 years yeah yeah so you're not you're not like a first couple of weeks you're trying to you, you know if there's a couple of guys out there you, you you like to hold on to the to the waiver for a little bit longer or if if you like a guy in the first week or three you might spend half or three quarters of it I I, I spent half on Mike Davis on sixty six leagues okay. yeah I got you well okay. two years how's that working out for me by the way right yeah. great before week one last year Casey had us spend uh, we probably spent six hundred dollars on in every one of our teams on Darren Waller. Um, and that was cr- we crushed. And I, How's and that it, working like, out? What I, the, one of my favorite things about FFPC is it shows, and it, they, they were ahead of the game. A lot of people are doing it now, but years ago, nobody showed you the next highest bid. And like right. you know, we had like five ninety nine on Darren Waller, or you know six oh seven or whatever, and like the next highest bid was like three. <laughs> right. And it's just like whatever, right. who, who, whoever, whatever. And right. Then, I mean, especially in Dynasty, if you're adding a guy for five or six years that's sure. got those kind of talents, you know, Chase Claypool, God, how could you say, and, and they commented, you really you just blew your whole year. Nine seconds. You know, you just gave me, if they just do a redraft right now, where you do you can't trade for, you can't trade for Claypool, right? You can't now. even buy it. Here. Yeah. In a maiden read a rookie draft. If you re- redo the rookie drafts, where's he going right now? I guarantee it's the top 12. Oh, for sure. You top give me six, a, probably. You want to give me a free first round pick for funny money? Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I'll take that. I, I'll worry about it later. Me too. Yeah. My favorite thing I to do is buy a couple of guys off the waiver and trade them for second round picks and turn those twos right. into ones later. It's right. Well, that we, the Mike Davis thing's tricky because I have so much of them and I get offers literally every day. And now C Max coming back, the offers are coming down. They were a bunch of seconds and stuff mm-hmm. like that. You know, they're coming down now, and I'm like. He's got some standalone value. I'm, I'm telling you, 
right now. He's going to have some Kareem Hunt-esque value even when McCaffrey comes back. It might be a little bit of a stretch. It, it, it could be strong. But I, I'm telling you, he, he's going to be startable. I think there's the some way value he there. he catches the ball. Kareem Hunt's a straight here's, monster. But well, here's I, why, I get, here's, here's why he is, Nelson is, is more right than wrong on his statement is because he already said it before. Um, maybe they dial back Christian McCaffrey not, a little bit. Christian McCaffrey's not coming back in and doing 99% of the snaps. He's, and it, Mike it, Davis has obviously showed very well, so. The uh, the flip side of that is all of a sudden the Panthers are three and two and of Bingo. Hold, and and holding the opposing quarterbacks to like the six worth fantasy worst fantasy right. numbers in the league and nobody saw that coming it was all nobody. like hey fade, fade the Panthers defense the youngest defense in the league it's gonna be the worst defense in the league your players are gonna crush against the Panthers every week obviously uh, Josh Jacobs did week one but. They the Panthers are the, they haven't been giving up cool, a whole lot of running back points. The Panthers are I one of the coolest that. stories in the NFL right now. Yeah, um, Matt, so Matt Rule is I agree. crushing. And uh, yeah, but I mean, when when as they're rolling along here, they're no they <laughs> the guys putting up thirty points a game fantasy right twenty eight points a game every week. Uh, they're not going to rush McCaffrey. Well, I was just about to say that you know, there's no reason to rush your your. Golden Your goose back right million. now, yeah. Why? And, yeah. and when he comes back, people think he's going to come right back into to thirty touches a game. That's just not well, going to happen. That nobody had ever really done that in general before, ever. Period. So right. the fact that that you know, like, like Big Co said, you touched on that earlier, a couple, you know, thirty minutes ago, at some you, you dropped that kind of usage rate. Um, but yeah, no, you're. I feel you on that. I, I don't know if – I don't think he's quite on Kareem Hunt's level as a player in general. No, uh, but, I, I, but I'm telling you. I, I, I don't hate when, it. When he comes back, McCaffrey, I'm, I'm telling you, he's going to get 10 or 12 touches a game, Davis. I could I could see that. I mean – The way he's no, been I catching the ball. At least for a little bit. The way he catches the ball. Yeah. yeah well, that, the, that other guy, the other guy just happens to be the best injury. ball catcher of all in the land. Yeah. So – but you know, we all know that high ankle thing. That sure, that is, sure. That is and I, I agree. the trickiest injury, right? No, absolutely. absolutely. And no reason to bring any, it back quick. Not that you need any help with your team management there, Nelson. But with your sixty teams, there's definitely should be some cash outage going on on your Mike Davis. Just as a diverse, like you said, you paid funny money for him. You were ahead of the game. You paid there's up. Two for schools him. of thought on that. You could either no. say you paid funny money going and with fuck the ride it. the horse, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm riding. I'm riding until he's, until he's done. I'm riding them. I'm just riding them. <laughs> I ride them and then dump them later, but I'm riding them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get one more question in. And we talked about it some already, but I mean, just value in rookie draft picks. You said, you know, obviously you, you, you want to get first rounders in the startup, but in general, like you, you wheeling and dealing those things, you working it hard to, to get them or, or are you, spending them in season or is it, you know, obviously you got a million leagues. So it's probably a little bit of a mixed bag, but, What's your uh, value and how do you stand on your – what are you doing in, when the rookie wise? draft starts? What are you right, are you trying to make starts? your picks? Are you deep into the rookie analysis and you want, you got rookies you want to take? Are you spending your picks? Are you trying to trade them in the draft? A little bit of all like that. Veterans that you know are good already. Like I said, you go through every round, you know, you're, you're targeting somebody. That's why you have a lot of similar players. That's why I've had some huge years where – my winning percentage is goofy. And then, you know, two or three of those guys go down. You just tend to draft a lot, a lot of the same people. It's, it's crazy. But if you look at it, people, people do it. You sure. know, you like who you like, right? And if your guy's there, that's your guy. Cause you, you've drafted him 20 other times. You think he's the right <laughs> guy in that spot. You, you're not going to just change your philosophy. Um, but I, I don't move around quite as bit quite as much as most people do. I kind of I tend to kind of like to let the aggressive people come to me. Um, I don't like to force the action. I think I'm better than most of the people that are in the drafts. I think I, I believe in what I do. So, you know, as long as I'm comfortable, you know, with, with two or three players and, and I'm not, hey man, I'm not shy about taking somebody in the fifth round you know, that that's been going in the sixth round. Um, I'm, sure. I don't, I, yeah, but a lot of people are stuck on that, man. They, they, they're they stuck on it. Oh, it's not a good value. Well, you're looking for good players, right? You're yeah. looking for good, reliable players. 
and, and the guessing is, you know, you're guessing, you know, I, and last year was kind of an easy year to do this because, and all my startups are, are crushing right now because I remember people messaging me, you know, you're crazy. You value rookies too high. Well, that was an unprecedented rookie class receiver class coming out. You know, sure. there, there's just too many good players and you got to have a bunch of them on your team. You, you just had it. People were wearing Dobbins and Swift and this, you know, going in the third, fourth rounds, whatever, you know, in, in maidens and, you know, they're good players. Their, their time will come. You know, there's some coaching idiots out there that, 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 block people's pads, but they're, they're good players, man. Mm -hmm. You know, Swift is a good player. They want to run in the lions and run their five and 11 season. Like they always do or whatever they're doing this year. It's fine. And, and play Adrian Peterson and whatever. Swift is a good player. Really good player. Dobbins is a super good player. These guys are going to be big time players toward the end of this year. I believe. Sure. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. We're, you gotta, we're and you gotta have them. Yeah. You got to have them. Well, and that's a good, I mean, we haven't talked really, you know, if we were going to have a show today, it probably would have been talking about, Hey, what's going on right now. Everybody's kind of throwing shade at all these rookie running backs. that just came out right now. Everybody's mad at Taylor. Everybody's mad at Dobbins. Everybody's mad at Swift. Like right now is the time to start coming in and swooping in and trying to go get those players from, because like you said, we say it all the time and you said it before patience is not a virtue that dynasty players exhibit almost ever. Uh, so it's, it's starting to get that. Like you said, Oh, I'm one in four. Oh, I got to start figuring out how to unload these guys and rebuild. It was a miss. It was a miss. I missed on that guy. Like this is, this is the, the time where you start percolating those trades and, you know, slow playing somebody into making a good deal on a JK Dobbins, uh, or a Swift. I think when we look back at this draft class last year, it'll be unprecedented with the talent that came out of this class. I mean, you haven't seen seen anything from Jerry Judy. I think he is fantastic player. Sure, you know, you got to have somebody throw it to you to be fantastic, right? right. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that'll come when you're 21. You know, first thing you do is you click on the age. Man, it says 22 years old. Okay, you know, Michael Thomas wasn't Michael Thomas till he was 26 years old, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it takes and in some the right time system. And in the right system. It, in the right system. Like if you think Michael Thomas with Taysom Hill or Jameis Winston is going to be Michael Thomas with Drew Brees, you're kidding yourself. Okay. So just, it's just the way it goes, man. You got to have, you, you draft talent, the talent eventually. Sure. Listen, AJ Brown. Okay. Mariota throwing to him. Problem, right? Where sure. He wouldn't be AJ Brown. Okay. Without Tannehill. Yeah, getting the ball home. So, you know, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, like that. seen it a million times. I mean, DK Metcalf, everybody was mad because he didn't run a good three cone drill and he only ran <laughs> two routes. And it's like, dude, just look at the guy, just fucking look at him. Like, right, this right. dude, is good luck. And then he went to Seattle, and it's we said from the jump, like, good luck guarding this. They play off script constantly. Good luck guarding that guy for more than four seconds. I'm guarding. Right. And, and, and on the flip side, you look at like like in Baltimore, people are six round pick, and I have a ton of them. Marquise Brown, people just down on him. Six round maiden pick, straight through. That's what he went. And you know the quarterback's not playing well. It's not Marquise Brown. He hasn't changed as a player. The quarterback's not playing well. Sure. I mean, he's getting wide receiver one usage for the most part. It's not quite getting to where it needs to be, but like you're saying, it's there. Right. Quarterback's not sharp. Sure. And, and, and that's the way it goes. And then, you know, you had everybody, everybody was all in on Lamar because he won a, a bunch of people some money last year. Right now, that looks like the bummer pick of the season. At this point, it has been. I, you know, I, I did draft him a couple times. Sure. How could you not? You know, it, it, late, like 212, I took him a couple times and – you know, hasn't worked I out told, so far. I told Casey all year, uh, every, every I said I, I, if I had the first pick and I had Christian McCaffrey and I came back around at two twelve and three one, it'd be hard not to pass on Lamar Jack, hard to pass on Lamar Jackson if he was there to put those two guys on my in my starting lineup every week. Yeah, and right now you'd be fucking <laughs> one one and four maybe with the hey man, deal, you, you know you, that's you the draft that's super why we flex. Play. You guys don't play. play a lot of super flex. I, I play a bunch of it. We don't play well, FFPC super flex, but we play. Deeper, okay. deeper bench. So uh, super there, the first four picks were the same four picks 
in super flex for everybody in the world, right? Yeah, the two you quarterbacks Barkley, and the two running backs. Barkley, McCaffrey, Lamar, and Mahomes, right? Same four, every four. Okay, sure. three, of those, three of those four ain't working out too well this year. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Exactly. And I mean, even Mahomes, really, I mean, he's had some, he's had some good ones, but he's come back down to earth a little bit. And so it is what it is, man. It's, it's a fickle, fickle game we're playing here. It is. Like that's I said why, earlier, you, that, you that's why you need Dynasty Depot. That's why you need you this. You get rid of that dog and buy a new dog. That's right. <laughs> let's, let's load it up again. That's what I'm talking Love about. It. Let's Love do it. something different. Well, wow. Nelson, we really appreciate you coming by, man. Thanks, it's, it, uh, again, it's DynastyDepot.com, and it's at the Dynasty Depot on Twitter. That's my man, Nelson. Uh, that's Jay Wayne up uh, – well, I don't know how you guys are looking at it. For Jay <laughs> Wayne and Big Co. Yeah, yeah I'm top up, right. Up the top. Big Co. We'll have the names up there. Don't worry about it. But, yeah, Nelson, uh, yeah, thanks again for coming in, and I guarantee you I'm going to do a startup and put it for sale before I play a game. I, you know what? I might buy it. <laughs> it'll be a good one so guys i want to thank you very much for the opportunity i love chatting with you guys um maybe we can do this again once the auctions Absolutely. start going live early in january we come on we'll talk about some teams on the site and let's analyze it. some stuff it, it seems like a great group of guys and and uh i won't forget the opportunity you gave me and i really appreciate it yeah man everything was great except for all the eagle stuff so Maybe next Thanks, time. Man. Can you just we'll take all that down? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to get a big meatloaf. I'm going to put a meatloaf. There we right go. There. That's yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's the meat. All right, guys. All right, guys. Until next us. time. Go ahead, Jay Wayne. Sign us up. Peace. <laughs> Thanks, Nelson. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs>